Okay, so it's time to start on the bowl. I mean, literally five minutes ago, I finished that, that second flat piece. <laughs> When I get started on something, I just kind of go with it. Um, after watching the video on making the felted bowl, I knew that I had exactly what I needed for, do they call it the resist? The thing that's on the inside, the template that gives you the shape of the bowl. And this is, I don't even know what they call this. This is some kind of a very thin, flexible plastic insulator that you put underneath the floor uh, when your husband's putting new floors in the house that are supposed to look like wood floors but aren't exactly, this is the stuff he uses. And I knew we had some left over in the garage, so I went out in the garage while he's at work and I swiped uh, uh, a square of this. Um, so I ruined that panel for him. Sorry, honey. But I really needed this and nothing else. Now, I've, I think people use uh, cardboard and you could use uh, plastic, um, but I wanted something that was flexible, stiff enough, to be a good form, but flexible enough to come out the hole. Okay, so I'm not going to take you through the whole hour and a half like Miss Brown did on her video, uh, mostly because you can watch her and she's a professional and I don't know what I'm doing. But if you enjoy watching somebody not know what they're doing, then this video is for you. So I'm in the kitchen where it's okay to get wet and I'm going to have to do all of the standing up, which uh, I may have to pull a chair in here and just not be at the right height or something because that's a long time on your legs, as you know. I put down my bubble wrap and then I have my little form on top, okay? Um, and I would say that's probably about nine inches, eight inches across. Um, and the yarns, the fiber, the roving that I want to use as my base that my bowl is going to look like is this really dark maroon and then a slightly lighter maroon and then a lighter maroon. Th these are both merino, uh, nice and smooth. This is a little bit scratchier. So I'm gonna keep these close at hand up there in my apple basket and I'm going to lay this out just like Miss Brown does or try to. I've just put my dark down. Now I'm probably making this harder for myself by using different yarns I like things to stay interesting. Oh, okay. And um, so I'm hoping that this will help. I don't want to get bored with my color. Now she did say not to do it too thick around the edges. Um, if you have the fiber too thick, it will struggle to felt. We're going to do three layers on this. This blue disc that you see is going to actually be on the inside, keeping the cavity of the um, bowl open so that the so that there is a cavity and the inside of the bowl doesn't felt to itself. Okay, let's do a little bit of this brighter color. Remember, I don't know what I'm doing. Hoping that this will give it kind of a variegated look. She also uses a bat of fiber, which is kind of nice and flat. It's been processed a little bit more than this roving has. And um, so it lies a little flatter. It is not thick. However, we're going to go with what we've got. Because roving is what I have. And I've seen people use roving perfectly well, too. Okay. Now, yeah, my pieces are just longer than hers. Now, I'm going to go back to my first color. Now, I'm not going to take you through all of these. I'm going to show you how I'm doing it the first time around. I'm trying to keep these short. Um, I'm laying these in the middle. Okay. She called them almost like roof tiles or... Shingles. She called them shingles so that they overlap. And you're not supposed to let these pieces go beyond the edge. Okay, they're not supposed to interfere with those edge pieces. Which at all is a little bulkier over there. Just a little bit more on that edge. That edge. Okay, mm -hmm. is that good enough? I don't know. 
Last, my last piece was too thin, so I'm a little worried about having it be too thin. Okay. All right. Now I gotta check and see what she does. Okay. Now Miss Brown does spray her fiber at this point when it moist. But she said that until I get all three layers on both sides of this, I don't want my fibers to start binding together. So the point is not to felt it right now. I hope that that's what it, she put a lot. She actually has a different sprayer. And um, I don't want to touch it too much with dry hands because it will come up. Now here's my mesh. Okay, and then I'm going to have some soap. Now I don't know that this is olive oil soap. I could certainly make olive oil soap. Now what she does is she goes from the center outward and she just pushes the soap outward. You're gently introducing the water and the soap. It's almost like this is a little dance with this bowl that you push things outward and then later you try to pull them back in. That should be enough. Okay. Now let me see what she does next. Okay, now after she um, takes the soap off, with her hands, she just gently presses out, okay? And then you take your mesh off. Now the fiber is going to want to stick to your mesh, and you don't want that to happen. You want the fiber to stay with that round template, that what she calls the resist. But once you start peeling it back, it should do fine. I am loving that color. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then you're going to put a second piece of bubble wrap, that one's rather wet from my last project, on top. And she said you want to make sure when you, and whenever you put a bubble wrap on top of the fiber that you press out. I think she's keeping it in contact with the bubble wrap. She's also trying to press the air out because if you have air bubbles in your fiber, it will keep your fiber from felting one fiber to another fiber. And that makes sense. I kind of don't understand why we use bubble wrap that automatically traps little pieces of air in there, but it may also have a nice felting quality to it because it's a little bumpy. Okay, and then you're going to take it, make sure you grab that template underneath, and you're going to flip it. This is the part I can't wait to do. Before we lift this up, again, it's like almost like every time you have bubble wrap, you press, you press, okay? So you lift that up, and it doesn't matter this time if these fibers lift up because you're going to pull them up, and you're going to, this is like the face of a clock, you're going to bring all of these fibers in. We're starting to make our bowl. Now it's a little thinner over there, and the fibers over here on this side are quite long. Again, I'm a beginner. You don't want any bumps, I would think. So you're really trying to get them all to come in as straight as possible. Which is hard on a round surface like that. Okay. Now mine's not very well centered. Notice how these are longer and these are shorter, but, um, but that's okay. We're learning, we're learning. Now we're gonna repeat exactly what we did the first time. We're gonna lay a new batch of fiber around the edge and we're going to um, put the, what does she call them? Not tiles, but um, anyway, uh, little tiles like a roof uh, on here, okay? Okay, I've laid out that um, second side of the first round and I sprayed it and I put the mesh on it and I applied some soap and I pressed it out. Now I'm putting this down and I'm pressing it out again. And I'm going to grab it, flip it over, and lift that up. And now I want to wrap those fibers around the template again. And then I will have completed the first encasing of that template, or as they call it, the resist. 
they call it a resist because it prevents the inside of the bowl from adhering to itself. And she starts to kind of gently draw. Now, I've got more soap than she does. She doesn't have as much water or as much soap. She's really good. I tend to overdo, overdo it. Um, okay. So that's my friend. Now, she puts a little marker after she finishes one round. Um, I can't imagine losing track of this as I go. So now I'm going to do everything I've just done. I'm going to do it two more times. Okay, so I have a total of three layers on this. And then I'll bring you back in after I've done that. Okay, so I finished the both sides of three layers. So a total of six times I did that, um, the rolling up of the edges and everything. And I've put my embellishments on here. I've used a little of that blue, and I love that flame, and some of the butterscotch, and even one little pass of dark brown. And I put it on there. I need to keep my hands soapy and slick. And I've just pressed it gently. You even have to keep your hands soapy when you're touching the plastic so that they so that your hands roll over it. And now I'm going to flip it and make sure that those embellishments are tucked underneath the side. Let me do that. Okay, well, I've been at this most of the morning. <laughs> and um it's been very fun. It's um I'm hungry for lunch. <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like now. I have put what she calls the embellishments on. And um, so that's good, but I haven't even started the fulling process. Haven't cut the hole, haven't really started really handling this thing. I've just really got all the yarns on, but let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is gonna be, I think the top side, this is where the hole will go. Um, I'm a little hesitant to flip it over and show you the other side. I hope that my sides are nice and tidy like hers end up being just seamless. Um, but I think I'm going to take a break now and have lunch and come back to it later. Well, now I'm coming back and I'm just going to give you a little bit of commentary as I work this bowl. Whenever you have the bubble wrap on there, keep it wet and soapy on top so that your hands really glide over it. Now, I'm not really applying much pressure here, or I should say, I shouldn't be applying much pressure here. You want to make sure that you massage the top, flip it over, do the same, keep applying some water. You're not putting water into your felt. And every time you flip it over, you're going to pull away from the edges of that resist in there. Keep it moist. You're working those fibers together but you're really pulling away from the outside edge. Even when you put the soap in, pull it away from the edge like that. It's a constant massaging process. Now I have cut out and edited a lot of this. You really do this several times on each side. As you go along and as the piece felts together better, um, which is what you're doing here, you're getting the fibers to mesh. Um, you just flip it over and over and do this more and more. And work the edges. You really want to put your hands around the edge and rub that um, the edge of the resist. See how I'm rubbing the edges there? I think every time you take that off, you pull it in. Well, after much, much rubbing with my hands, 
with the felting in between both layers of bubble wrap with lots of soap and water. Um, I finally decided it was start, time to start rolling it. I did a lot of the hand rubbing, and as uh, Miss Brown said, if you do a lot of that, you don't have to do much rolling. So I rolled this up in the bubble wrap, and then rolled it in a tea towel, and then just gently rotated this way, 15 rolls, and it's already starting to shrink this much. It's pulling up on these two sides because the, the felting is starting to shrink. So I'm gonna need to keep on rolling it gently, rotating it, flipping it, and making sure that I do it from every single side so that I don't have it shrinking unevenly. I do think a good bit of this curling is also due to the fact that the template is still in there and I'm kind of cranking it around and it's going to want to stay in that position. But we are beginning the fulling process, the shrinking process. So now I think I will flip it again and just rotate it 45 degrees. feel the bubble wrap popping underneath my hands. I hope that means I'm doing a good job of securing it. Okay, so I'll probably do this, oh, another three or four times in different positions, and then we'll go on from there. I've brought a chair into the kitchen um, just because my legs are so tired. Um, okay, so I have rolled this several times. Pretty satisfied with it. Um, I think everything's felted pretty well. None of the stuff is moving around. And I still have a good bit of uh, shrinkage to go. Now I need to decide which side is going to be the top. And I think this side will be the top. Now she said when you cut a little hole, and I'm going to use these little snips to make the hole really quite small because felted, uh, wet felting, wet, wet felted fiber um, does. Uh, stretch. So I'm going to make a little snip. It feels terrible to snip stuff that you've just been working with so carefully and make sure that you snip all the way down to that template all the way through all the layers. She really recommended an opening about as big as like a little as a bottle cap. One more little snip. So, that big. I mean, it's a little bigger around the moon of my thumb. There you go. Okay. Now, the thing we have to do next is to finish off this raw edge in here. And so I'm going to get make sure I have soap. in my fingers. I'm going to keep one hand on the outside and two fingers on the inside. I'm really going to rub on that raw edge so that those 
fibers also felt together in a nice smooth way. And this may take some time. And as I do it, this opening will gradually get larger. I'm not sure that mine is as thick as hers, which all that means is that she used more fiber, which I thought, I really thought I was using too much fiber, but we'll see. Okay, well, I've got that opening big enough that I can kind of squeeze my hand in, you see? And I can also get my fingers around the edge of that template, so I'm kind of, I think mine is not as flexible as hers, but um, I can get, I can kind of lift it up, get my hand around there, and I'm gonna rub along that edge, trying to get as smooth of an edge as I can. I can feel that some of the fibers in there are dry and trying to stick to that template. Like to, the, to the little scratchy edges of the template. So maybe I need to look up a different template that's not quite so grabby on the wool. But it is coming away from it, and I think I'll be able to... Once I get it out of there, I'll wet the inside. It, it does feel very soapy and wet still, but... Um, yeah. My template is almost folding up, and you can hear it cracking in there, can't you? Um, I don't think it's supposed to do that, <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to keep on going. When I get the template pulled out through the hole and I start really working with it, then I'll bring you back. Okay, I did a good bit of rolling, watched the video some more. Um, I've rinsed it out to get some of the soap out of it, but it is, um, hers was still quite wet when she was working with it. Um, at this point, so I felt like I needed to uh, keep it moist. Now she has a tool that she sticks in there and uses to kind of shape it. Um, I'm gonna keep on shaping it evenly. The thing that came to my mind was this tool, which is, I don't know what this, this might be for darning. It looks like a little teeny rolling pin, but it's really too small. I'm not sure what it is. Um, I used to have a wooden, darning implement um, and it was a, a really more of a ball on the end um, not quite like that but not as long as this and I'm not sure what happened to that I don't know anyway but something like this or a wooden spoon would work fine anything that you can just kind of press in there that's not going to stick to the wool um, mine's still pretty wet she also does this to it Hers is bigger. Her bowl is definitely bigger than mine. Mine has shrunk up a good bit now. But I'm quite pleased. Oh, wow. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> this, I have worked at this since probably 9.30 this morning, and now it's uh, almost 1 o'clock. And I, I stopped and ate a little apple for lunch. But I just watched the video still. So this, this is a very time-consuming project. But the thing you get at the end is something that beautiful. Isn't that fun? Now, I had bubble wrap. I had lots of fiber. Some of you people also have tons of fiber. There's no reason you can't do this. I didn't have um, olive oil soap or Castile soap, which doesn't bubble as much, doesn't lather as much. Um, mine, that's why I had so much lather on mine, but she didn't. My fiber you can see, I mean, it still has some wispiness on it. Maybe hers does too. I didn't really see it close up. She also thought about turning over the lip of her bowl. Man, I've got to say, I am in love with that. Now, I, you, I do need to get it even. I think this is a tricky part so that it's not wobbly. I think that's why she was whipping it around on her hand. Um, the centrifugal force would make it more even. But it is cloth, so it's pretty malleable. But people use these for all kinds of things. You can, um, a lot of people keep their keys and odds and ends in them. Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not much for having things just sit around the house. But I am just so crazy about the look of that. I see, I've still got some wispy fiber coming out of the middle. <laughs> because I'm not very good at this yet, but. What do you 
think. I'm quite excited. All right, I'll take some photos and put them here at the end and then we'll be done with this. If you really, really want a good tutorial on how to do this, then please watch uh, Nicola, I think it's Nicola or Nicola Brown's video um, that I, uh, I'll put it as an end card. I'll try to remember to do that and put it down in the description because um, she's a professional. She shows stuff at exhibitions. Here it is from the top. All right, I'll see you later, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.